Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jim Thomas and my wife Lynn and I have been campers for over 40 years and learned a couple things along the way. And we like to share those every once in a while in videos. And here today is really a follow-up to four videos I did last year about the installation of solar and an inverter and lithium ion batteries and all the ancillary stuff that goes with that in our Voyage 3134 RL fifth wheel made by Winnebago. This year we went another step and so that's what this video is going to be. I'll give you a real quick recap on what we did last year and then we'll get into what's new this year. So last year we installed two 170 amp hour batteries from GoBigBattery.com. I've been very pleased with those. They've been working exceptionally well and inverter ic3000 inverter charger uh, from go power uh, very happy with that it can charge batteries at 125 amps it's a 3000 watt inverter with a 6000 watt surge rating uh, and it's been doing a great job and also does power sharing so if you hooked up to something less than a full power service it can share drawing some power from shore power and some power from your batteries to run high uh, amperage loads and then uh, over on here is a circuit breaker for a disconnect from the solar panels and then a Renogy Rover uh, MPPT charge controller and so last year we installed four 100 watt panels which are connected to this and then there's you know the fuse on the outlets there's disconnects and disconnects for the uh, inverter and the battery shunt and all those sorts of things if you want more details on that I would invite you to go back the links will be below and check out the work that we did last year to do the basic install of the system well we've used it for a year and decided that we wanted a little more solar you know usually in round numbers you want at least twice as many watts of solar as you have amp hours of battery and so we decided this year we added six more 100 watt panels and another charge controller. But instead of a regular charge controller, we got a DC to DC charger from Renogy that also includes an MPPT controller built into it. So this one can handle up to 660 watts of solar and it'll take up to 50 amps of charge current from your tow vehicle. So what that does is, so we have the 600 watts of solar from the roof that are run into there, and then it goes through into the battery compartment into the rest of the system. And then, uh, and I'll show you a picture of the panels in a minute. Both it and the MPPT controller, the Rover, have Bluetooth transmitters. So I can, on my phone, see the status of each of those, how well they're charging, how's that all going. Uh, that works super well. Apologize for the traffic noise and I'll show you up front here how we connect to the truck I made a cable which uh, comes out here and it's got an Anderson connector I used a uh, number six wire and made this harness which goes from here back into the pin box area and then in here it goes up and through into the battery box there. Everything is concealed and out of sight and I was really happy that that worked out. Good access here to get into this area to run that cable in. So that comes to here and there's enough of that to reach all over the bed of the truck. And let's go look at the truck. Our truck is a 2020 GMC Denali 3500 single rear axle uh, with the Duramax diesel. It has the optional twin alternators, which means I have both a 220 amp and 170 amp alternator on the engine. So pulling 50 amps to help charge batteries is not a big deal for the truck. It doesn't seem to care or even know. And so here's the other end of the Anderson connector. And so that cable from the truck plugs in here. And then those cables run along the frame rail into the front engine compartment where and use an unused um, slot on top of one of the batteries and put in a fuse there a 75 amp fuse and then that's connected all the way back 
that's worked really well. Uh, we've been very pleased with that. We more than doubled our solar production this year. Uh, and at the same time, uh, also made it so that if we get somewhere where we're short on power and it's been cloudy for a couple of days, we can always plug in the truck and pull 50 amps from the truck to help charge the batteries. And the, can also do that while we're going down the road, obviously. All right, let me pause you for just a sec. We'll get up on the roof and I'll show you what it All looks right, up like. Here up here on the roof, you can see these four panels over here are the original 400 watts of panels that we put on last year. And then we added six more this year. So you can see there's two here and then four more up towards the front. They look kind of like they're scattered all over, and I guess they kind of are, but I thought it was really important to leave a good clean walkway across the roof. So if I need to get to do the annual roof service, check the die core, if I need to do my annual service on the air conditioners, I wanted to be able to walk everywhere without toe tipping around. And so, these aren't all on a nice, clean, straight road, but what it does do is leave me a very clean walkway to the front. And let me show you a little bit more about how these got laid out. The original four went straight through the solar prep package that was on our unit when we bought it. Then the other six are run up this way uh, into a combiner box. One of the peculiarities of the MPPT controller, the DC to DC charger that we use, is that can only take a max of 25 volts. So all of these six that we added this year had to be in parallel, whereas the four I put in last year are in series. So I've got some in series and some in parallel. That's just the way it works out. So what that me meant, though, is that I needed a combiner box to put all of those together and then it comes out of the combiner box and comes over to here where I added a new roof penetration uh, to bring that solar wire down and found a place behind the pantry where there was a chase where I could get into that really easily and run that power to that front bay and get it connected up. So that's this year's solar project. We added six more panels, the combiner box, the DC to DC charger wires and connectors up to the truck and the Bluetooth connector. And so there we go. So now we're running a thousand watts of solar, 340 amp hours of lithium batteries. I might want to add one more battery someday. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but very pleased with this setup now and the way that it's working. You know, the trailer sits here in the driveway at home. Uh, and it's not plugged in and everything's turned on, the inverter's on. We can come out here and watch TV or do whatever we want and we've got plenty of power for that. The one thing it won't do is if you try to go off grid and you have a uh, combination refrigerator that'll run on either 110 or propane, you learn very quickly that there are significant power hogs when you run them on AC. Uh, this refrigerator is a 16 cubic foot and uses somewhere around four or five hundred watts When it's running on AC, that's a lot of power draw out of your battery bank uh, And so even with a thousand watts of solar and the batteries that I have we can't stay continuously running After on the fridge on propane. I can't run it on AC Which is not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice if it was like completely self-sufficient but you can't get there with just a thousand watts of solar. You need much more than that, I'm afraid. So, but it's a good system. And right now sitting here, it's not plugged in. And, you know, obviously it keeps the batteries up and we can get, uh, I don't know, I think indefinite dry camping if we we'll run the fridge on propane. Uh, we'll, all the stuff that we want to do. The inverter charger will run the um, convection microwave it'll run everything else probably the water heater would be on propane as well but if we're willing to make the sacrifice of running the fridge and the water heater on propane everything else will be covered by the system without any trouble at all all right so that's this year's update i'll do another follow-up video next year after we use it some more and let you know after another year how pleased are we do we want to make any more changes is this it are we good 
uh, and we'll let you know that then. Listen, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. If you found something you like, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. And be sure to go back to the homepage where you can find videos. Last year's solar install, there's four videos about that. There's more about refrigerators and also uh, just posted a top 10 uh, quick and easy mods for less than $50 each you can do to your RV to make it your own. And that'll be there too. I hope you find things that you like. Leave a comment down below if there's something that you want to comment on or correct me on or make a suggestion about. Glad to hear all of those. Very glad that you came by. Thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. Bye.